whether to pay off your debt before you start investing. It's one of the most common financial questions I get, financial arguments really. Most people say just look at the numbers, but I've got two reasons that make absolutely no mathematical sense, but might just save your finances. We're talking paying off your mortgage or investing today on Let's Talk Money. Beat debt, make money, make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hoag with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, one of the most common questions I get from the community is whether you should pay off debt or invest first. Uh, there's a lot of side questions here, like whether to pay off those student loans or the mortgage or, or just paying off those high rate credit cards before you start putting money to, to stocks and bonds and other investments. Now, the answer you usually see to this is just a numbers game. You're told to compare the interest rates on debt against investment returns you think you can get uh, and then put money to the biggest numbers first. You know, essentially, you're paying off any debt that costs more than you think you can earn on investments. But that mathematical reason just doesn't account for a lot of the emotion around debt or the factors that are going to surprise you and might change how you think about the question. So what I want to do with this video is first do a quick run through on the numbers, I show you the average rates on different types of debt and, and then compare it with the average returns on different investments. Then I'm going to reveal two surprise reasons that have nothing to do with the numbers but everything to do with coming to that right answer. I'm doing this video as a collaboration with Sarah, the budget girl here on YouTube, and I love the idea. I'll share my perspective in this video, but be sure to click over and watch her video next for that other viewpoint. Uh, we've argued back and forth on the question and she makes some great points, so look for that link to her video in the description below. So here we see the average interest rates on three types of debt and different credit scores here. Uh, this is from a survey by Credit Sesame in early 2018, so rates are a little lower right now, but we see mortgage rates around 4.5 to 6%, uh, car loan rates are average from 3.6 to 15%, and credit card rates are the highest with an average of 25% annual interest for those bad credit borrowers. Now compare that against the average annual return on different investments here in this data by JP Morgan for 20 years through 2018. Oh, we've got real estate stocks topping the list at 10% return, followed by investments in gold and oil, you know, producing about a 7% plus return. Then we've got stocks returning an average 5.6% return over the period. Uh, but let's use that 60-40 bar. That's a pretty common split for stocks and bonds and would have produced about a 5.2% annual return over the last two decades. Now, if you were to take $100 a month and then put it to one of these six types of debt or investment over 10 years, the numbers should speak for themselves, right? Using that money on credit card debt, and I used the middle interest rate for each of these debts. So, so using that $100 a month to pay in credit card debt would have been worth $27,000 at a 15% rate. Investing the money in REIT stocks would make you twenty dollars over the period. Uh, paying off a car loan would have been worth over $17,000, and investing across the stocks in the S&P 500 would have earned you over $16,000 over that 10 years. Now here at the bottom, so close that you really can't differentiate between the two lines, is that 60-40 split between stocks and bond investments, and then the mortgage debt at about 5.16% interest. So just going off of these numbers, it makes sense to pay off just about any type of debt before you start investing, and it's really a wash whether you pay off your mortgage or invest first. Uh, that's the easy answer. The one that you get from most people, you pay off that high rate debt on credit cards and personal loans, maybe while slow paying your mortgage and your student loans while you're investing. And that's where I'm at right now with my student loans. I still owe over $61,000 on undergrad and graduate programs, but at a weighted average rate of 2.9%, I'm paying the minimum and in investing the rest. Now Sarah has a different perspective and makes a few good points, so check out her video. But I'm going to reveal two reasons why you should break this numbers only rule. You know, first though, I want to get your opinion on this. Uh, what do you think? Should you pay off debt before you start investing? How do you decide? Uh, so scroll down and let us know in the comments below the video. Why have you decided to pay off debt or to invest first? But you know, even looking at the numbers, there are two reasons why you should break this rule and just start investing as soon as possible, even if you have some of that higher rate debt, you know, let alone the lower rate debt like student loans or a mortgage. It seems like a financially dumb decision investing for maybe a 7 or an 8% return while you're still paying that 14% on a credit card balance, but I want you to think about this. First off, shopping is just too much fun, okay? You may never be completely out of debt, or, or even if you do get to that debt-free scream, it might only be a few months before you find that new car that you absolutely have to have. So even if you never get completely out of debt, you will definitely reach a point someday that where you're going to need to rely on your investments for retirement, you know, God willing. 
Um, as a financial person, I know I'm not supposed to say this. I'm supposed to march to the drum of you must pay off debt, but it's just not realistic for everyone. You know, waiting to pay off debt before you invest just means you may never start investing and you'll be living off ramen noodles in retirement. Yes, by the way, the average Social Security benefit is just over $1,400 a month, and that's before taxes. So yeah, ramen noodles and government cheeks. Now, the other reason to start investing, even while maybe paying off some of that higher rate debt, is that it's going to get you into the habit of saving and, and then motivate you by watching that compound interest grow. You know, debt payoff is great, but even if you manage to reach debt free by your 40s, what then? You haven't built that habit of saving and investing. You know, at this point, you're looking at starting from zero, and that can be a little scary. The result is just that a lot of people just don't get started investing even after paying off their debt. So getting started investing early, even if it's just $50 a month while you pay off that debt, is going to motivate you to save more. That $50 a month started in your 20s grows to almost fifty grand over 30 years, and that's just on what you can do on less than a night out. So make the financially dumb decision to start investing. Even if you have higher rate debt or a mortgage, start that habit of saving and making your money work for you. So someday, you're going to be able to stop working for your money. Click on the video to the right here to get Sarah's perspective and why she says pay that debt off first. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.